Hey folks, it's Christopher here from Neon Captain. And we've been getting a lot of questions about how the radiator handles color, so I thought I'd make a quick tutorial to help everybody out. Um, it's really important, uh, first off, to remember that the radiator handles uh, two different color modes. Uh, the radiator supports traditional RGB, which is what you'd expect to find in any sort of laser control system. But we also support HSV, hue, saturation, and value, which is kind of non-standard, but lends itself to a lot of really cool laser effects. So let's get started. I'm going to start by putting the radiator into default mode by holding down shift and hitting reset. And that just kind of puts everything into the base configuration. And I'll make sure that uh, the LFOs are turned off. And let's start um, with RGB color mode, because that's the thing that you're probably most used to. So um, hit select on the color module and then by using the menu select and menu value uh, navigate over to RGB mode and make sure that it says uh, RGB and not HSV and just uh, use the value knob to change that. Okay, so now we're in RGB mode and the, uh, the top three knobs in the color module represent uh, red value green value, and blue value. So let's start by turning those all down except for red. And now we have a red circle. The circle is being generated by uh, shape A, which is just default when you reset the radiator. And by rotating the red knob, you can see we dim and brighten the red value in the circle. And we can do simple additive uh, color by adding green to get yellow and then adding blue on top of all that to get white or if we turn green back down uh, we get purple so pretty standard stuff uh, and you can also control these values uh, with the signal from the LFOs so let's start by turning on LFO 1 and then we'll hold down select and turn the size control up on shape A but make sure that the level on LFO 1 is set to 100 and then just turn the speed a little bit and you can see we've got this red circle that's growing and shrinking based on the sine wave output of LFO 1. So now if we hold down select and turn our color up and now I'm letting go of select and I'm turning the color all the way back down meaning that the color value for the red channel is only derived from the signal coming out of LFO 1 and you can see uh, as the circle grows and shrinks, uh, it fades in and fades out uh, kind of as expected. And if we increase the speed of this oscillator, uh, the brightness of the circle in relation to the size of the circle remains consistent as it should because all of that's coming from LFO uh, 1. And of course, we can use additional LFOs to control the value of the other color channels as we're doing this. And we can get some pretty cool effects. So I'm just going to reset the radiator again. Um, and remember, every time you reset the radiator, uh, it resets back to HSV mode. So uh, HSV mode changes the operation of these controls. Uh, instead of red, green, and blue, the controls now become hue, saturation, and value. And so by changing the hue control, uh, we walk through the color palette. Uh, saturation control um, fades from white to full color. And value uh, or brightness uh, controls the intensity of the overall output of the radiator. So this is really important. Uh, if you want to do chopping, you can tie an LFO to value and do some pretty cool stuff. Now let's go back to our earlier example where we have LFO 1 controlling uh, the size of shape A. So I'm going to hold down select here and turn size so the radiator knows to route the signal from LFO1 to the size of shape A. Make sure that the level is set high 
and then we'll just change the speed a little bit. And now, when we hold down select and turn the hue knob, you can see the shape changes color. It rotates through the color palette uh, based on the signal from LFO1 um, along with the size of the shape based on the same signal. And if we uh, turn the speed up, you can see that it remains, um, uh, the color change remains in sync with the size. I'm going to just slow this down a little bit. And we can do the same thing. Let's, let's hold down select and turn hue back to the left now, which unroutes that signal. Uh, and now we could route it over to uh, saturation instead. So you can see uh, the color fades to white uh, as the shape changes size. And we could do the same thing to intensity. Or we could take, say, LFO3 and route that over to intensity. And then remember to turn intensity all the way down and drive it only from this LFO and you get some cool chopping effects. Okay, so nice and easy and it's just uh, it can be a little confusing until you realize that uh, we do both RGB and HSV. So um, let's reset the radiator now. And I'm going to go over and I'm going to make sure that we're back into RGB mode. And let's talk about some of the, the color effects that we have. Uh, the first one uh, will be chop. So I'm going to take LFO1, assign it to size, just so we have some motion going on here. And then I'm going to turn these down all the way, except for red. OK. And we'll hit Select here. And then um, use the uh, Select and Value here to make sure Mod Type is set to Chop. And then turn Modulation on. And so that's killed Output. And what happens now is these are L uh, RGB levels. But these are choppers, uh, which control the intensity of that level. So uh, this is for red, this is for green, this is for blue. Uh, and as we turn the modulation controls, we can see that we're chopping up uh, that output. And we can just keep dialing this up until we get an interesting harmonic relationship between the chopping, the frequency of the draw speed, and the frequency of the size change. And now let's add a little green. So I'm turning the green value up. And now I'll turn the modulation control, which is chopping. And one thing to remember is, by default, these controls are in coarse mode. So if you hold down Shift and then drive a control, you have a much finer granularity. So if you're trying to fine tune a frequency, it's really the way to go. And now let's do the same thing with blue. Now once you've got an interesting color effect, uh, one of the things that's fun to play with is the speed control of the shape that you're drawing. You can get some really cool effects by uh, changing this frequency control. Uh, and also something that's fun to do is if you hold down select here and turn the speed control here just a little bit, uh, you change the draw frequency of shape A based on the output of LFO1 and you can get some, some kind of cool color swirly effects. So experiment with that a little bit and just play around and you'll discover all kinds of fun things. Uh, so I'm going to reset the radiator now. And not only does the radiator support chopping, but it's got a number of, of other kind of non-traditional color modulation effects. And let me demonstrate one of those real quick. So I'm going to hold down select on LFO1 and route the signal back 
uh, into shape A's, just so we've got something interesting to look at. And I'll slow this down a little bit. So now if we uh, hit select and um, we can control the modulation effect by either using the mod type here or over here in the menu, but let's do it over here. Um, and now you can see that I've selected X wave. So that's just kind of a nice one to start with. So let's hit modulation on. And now uh, these three parameters control the aspects of that modulation type. So I'm just gonna, I'll turn uh, P2 up to 100%. And I'm gonna turn P1 up to uh, about 21%. And P3, I'll turn to 8%. And you can see it's doing some interesting chopping. And then I'm going to uh, take LFO1 and direct it to Hue. And I'll just speed this up a little bit. Or maybe even turn this from a sine to a ramp wave. And then dial up a nice uh, modulation harmonic based on the frequency of shape A. And you can see we get some really kind of wacky and uh, beautiful color effects. And by experimenting with the modulation controls, uh, you have a pretty profound range of effects that you can dial up. Uh, look at these more A patterns, really, really nice. Uh, and you know, drive around and experiment with the different modulation types. There's some really cool stuff that I think you've probably never seen uh, in the laser world. But just have fun, and um, hopefully this has been kind of helpful. Um, as always, you know, hit us up on Facebook if you've got any questions, or you know, post some cool stuff that you're making to the Radiator Facebook group, and um, have a good time. Thank you.